Right, next we're going to remove the primary chain case, which in my case was already off the bike. So I've, I've mocked it back up again. So there's this small inspection casing here, so that's taken off. And then we've got the clutch operating mechanism. Uh, and those parts missing, there should be two little arms, two little like springy arms that come down from these bolts. They're missing and normally you would undo them take out the springy arms but they're missing on this bike then you remove the center lock nut then you remove this big nut from off the clutch pull rod now you have to have, i've got my fingernail in the end of the clutch push rod there to stop it spinning when i unscrew the main nut Okay, then you take the take the cable, that would be the clutch cable, take the clutch cable out of that, and that comes away. And then there should be three ball bearings sitting in behind this uh, behind this in these grooves. So when you pull that away, the ball bearings will probably fall out. So just be ready for them. You can replace them if you lose them, don't worry. But there's those three ball bearings that come out of the mechanism. Right. Yeah, so we remove all the outer screws. Uh, not forgetting that there's... Uh, uh, yeah, they're all the way around. And this being a T160, there aren't two screws in, this, in the centre of the casing as there are on a T150. Okay, so I remove all the outer screws. And again, this is already off. No. <laughs> So I know it comes off and of course I've only just there we go. and that was only just I mopped it back on and there the outer casing comes off. And on initial inspection I can also see that, that we've got a broken casing there. So I'm gonna see if I can get that welded up and uh, machine back down again to reveal the primary chain. Now primary chains on a T160 are unobtainable, you cannot get them. It's a special one-off chain made by Reynolds for the T160 and they're no longer made. So I think what we'll be doing with this, we'll be putting on a, 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 a triplex chain conversion because you can get a triple chain uh, and so what you do is change both these sprockets and fit a triple chain in place of this completely no longer available and in this case, completely worn out uh, primary chain. Right, next job, before I can remove the primary chain, is to remove this uh, gear change, uh, which is called a foot, for obvious reasons. It's a gear, gear change foot, and there's another foot in the outer casing that meshes with that. And they've really change gear. So I'm going to undo the nut, which will be very tight. So I'm going to use the old... Uh, uh, power impact driver. And see if that foot will come off. Depends how it's been. Uh, depends how it's been fitted. Right. Yeah. I was going to say uh, that these can be very tight. These feet. I've got it off. Um, but um, it can be very tight because people can weld them on. And indeed, this has been sort of welded in some way on it. It didn't want to come off, uh, but it's off now. Basically, you normally take the whole shaft out. Um, but I've been leaving that to give us better access to those nuts after I've got the, the, uh, the uh, primary chain off. But if this doesn't want to come off for whatever reason, the foot then you can take the whole shaft off there's two nuts i don't know if you can see on the camera but we'll see them later on when we take it out and you can remove those and pull the whole shaft out first but we've now got the foot off so we can now remove the primary chain now in order to remove the primary chain i need to lock the engine and ideally i should be using a tool like this from andy priest which is a tool that locks the primary chain solid. 
these teeth these teeth on this side fit in the engine sprocket on this side it fits in the chain wheel locks everything solid so you can undo the nuts without the engine spinning the problem is that this is a locking tool for a T150 and the one for a T160 the locking tool for a T160 is a different design and I don't have one and at the moment and is out of stock of the T160 so I can't use this locking tool so I need to find a different way of locking the primary chain and in this case I'm just going to use rag stuffed in the chain right I've locked the chain uh, with some rag old towel in my case up stuffed up there and stuffed down there uh, and I'll see if that's enough <laughs> to uh, lock the uh, primary chain <clears throat> first under this nut the shock absorber nut I'm laughing because I'm, I've got half a mind that this chain's so worn and this nut is so tight that it might just take the rag around the sprockets but we'll see I'm hoping that using the uh, cordless impact driver the shock is enough to free it. If all else fails, then we'll put a bar through the con rods. No problem. Oops. I should have protected. No, I see. I should have protected this thread. Should have covered the thread. I'm going to replace it anyway. Though there's a, a small oil seal in here. We've been through this, uh, and I should have protected the thread to protect the uh, save uh, <laughs> damage to the huh, damage to the oil seal but I'm looking at this oil seal and uh, it's been fitted the wrong way around <laughs> it's been fitted inside out so it wasn't doing anything the purpose of this oil seal is to stop oil going down the clutch shaft clutch pull rod into the clutch so you always have open side uh, facing the oil so the open side of this uh, should be facing us outwards and they fitted it inwards so that oil seal wouldn't have been doing much so I was going to replace it anyway but it's definitely going to be replaced now because it's going to be driven out and a new one put in the right way around yeah. now again another naughty thing this should definitely have a lock tab on it and there's no sign of a lock tab now that's bad I have uh, I've had two bikes where this nut has come loose uh, over the, you know mainly when I was young and naive and uh, it does make a mess of the outer primary chain case so not a good idea so there should be a, a lock washer on there not say lock nut a lock washer and there's no lock tab there's no lock washer it should be there right anyway we're going to undo this one now which is uh, 60 uh, 60 pounds. Oh, and um, just mention we've got the long 15th, 16th socket. To, uh, that's the one uh, for here. So it goes over the clutch push rod to get to that. Okay, so I've got a one and uh, one and one eighth socket for the uh, for the front, so for the engine sprocket. So hopefully the same that will happen again. And it does. Ah, uh, I see what they've done. They've put a spring washer for some reason. They've put a spring washer, uh, which is okay, but there's no substitute for a lock tab. But they put a spring washer. I think they said, oh, God, I haven't got a lock tab. I'll, uh, I'll have an order one and wait for it. I'll just put a spring washer on. Okay. Right, uh, so we've got those off now let's have a look can you see can you see what we're doing just about right so this may just come off now yeah it does good 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 okay so it just pulls off now and the thing only thing to watch for is oh, for any spaces yeah we've got one there too oh, oh i forgot the uh, there's a spacer that goes in there behind the nut. Yeah. This spacer, uh, can you see that? Yeah, this space has come out. It goes behind that nut. And this is uh, a spacer that's behind the engine sprocket. It's very important. So it was on there, and I made sure that when I pulled off, the uh, engine sprocket wasn't lost, because that's a shim put in at the factory, 
uh, and that makes sure the primary chain is dead in line. So always watch for those shims behind the, uh, behind the engine sprocket. Okay, and now we've got full access and now I can get to this, uh, get to these nuts properly and uh, remove the, uh, uh, remove the crossover shaft. 